The New Hampshire State Library is pleased to present a series of training videos on using the online catalog. This video will cover how to use lists in our online public access catalog. The State Library's online catalog allows you to create and save lists if you have a patron account to which you are logged in. We will begin the instruction from our OPAC, which is here. You can access this OPAC from the State Library's website. In order to use lists, you must be registered as a patron of the State Library and you must log in with your patron account. For today's demonstration, we are going to use a patron named Todd Hufflepuff as our example. So I will enter his username, Todd.Hufflepuffle. All usernames use that format of first name dot last name. And then I will enter his password. When I log into the account, I am immediately taken to Mr. Hufflepuffle's user account. Lists are accessible on the left-hand panel from the very bottom of the list, where it says Your Lists. Mr. Hufflepuffle already has two lists established, which you can see here, Manchester History and the Poems of Jane Kenyon. We can access an individual list from here by clicking on the particular list, Manchester History, for example, and see what things have been added to it. Each individual title is linked to that cataloging record where you can see more information about the specific item. If you wanted to do additional searching from one of these titles, you can click on any link within the record to bring up additional records that share that quality. You can also do an individual search in the library catalog for any keyword. I'm going to search for the subject of Manchester history and see what I get with a keyword search in our catalog. This has returned 316 results as it is a topic that, New Hampshire, that the New Hampshire State Library has quite a bit of material on. Let's see. So if I wish to add to my list, I can choose any of the records in my search results set and add an individual record by clicking on Save to Lists here at the bottom of the record in the display set. When I do that, it brings up my lists and allows me to choose any of my existing lists to add to. And then I click Save, and that item is now part of my list. I also have the option of choosing a variety of titles from my results set by clicking in the checkbox to the left of the number in the resulting set. When I do that, and I have gotten through the whole list and decided which ones I want and which ones I do not want, I can scroll back up to the top and choose with selected titles, add to your lists, and choose the list I wish to use. Again, it will bring up the little summary, show me what I'm adding, and I can click Save. I can also come to my lists from anywhere within the Union Catalog, assuming that I am logged in as a patron, from the Lists button at the top of the screen. If there were public lists, which would have been created by the State Library staff, they would display in this list. Additionally, the lists that have been created by the patron who is logged in, in this case, Todd Hufflepuffle, you can see his own lists as well. If he wishes to go to the list to do any work on them, he can click your lists from here and see what lists he has. You can edit a list from here by clicking the edit button. And this allows you to change how it's sorted and who can change contents. The way that our system is set up, only the owner may change any lists anyway, so it really doesn't make a difference what you choose here. Uh, but you can sort the list in different ways if you wish to do so, to sort it by author, sort it by year, sort it by call number, or sort it by title. I'm going to sort this one by title and save it. And if I want to see the list itself, 
I click on the title of the list. And here I have the poems of Jane Kenyon sorted alphabetically by title. Now, if I wish to take something off of this list, let's say, let's say I've collected this so that we can read it. Um, and Mr. Hufflepuffle has finished reading from room to room, so he doesn't need this on his list anymore. So he can choose the checkbox next to the title he wants to remove and click Remove from List. It'll ask to make sure that he is certain. Say OK. And now the list is as it was with one fewer items. You can also do that by checking a variety of things all at once. Let's say we're going to get rid of collected poems and the boat of quiet hours and click remove selected items. Again, it will ask you to confirm and you say OK. Now, in addition to having using lists that are already there, you may need to create a brand new list, especially if you're first time using the catalog. In order to do that, you have again a couple of options. You can search the catalog and from any record within the catalog, choose to start a new list. Oops, Wynant. Let's search for John Gilbert Wynant and see what we get. Uh, he was a governor of New Hampshire and there is a variety of material about him um, here in our collection. Here is a biography of John Gilbert Wynant and I can click on the title to look at the record and see more about it. It is held in the general collection here at the library. It's from 1968. It seems to be all about John Wynant as a governor. Um, and it looks like something that Mr. Hufflepuff might be interested in. So as a patron, he can add it to his list. Just like we saw before, if you click Save to your list, this window will come up. But this is not about Manchester history, and it is certainly not one of the poems of Jane Kenyon. So he needs a new list. So down further along this same window, we have the opportunity to create a new list. So I'm going to create a new one called J.G. Winant, and I'm going to save. And this will add this one title to my new list about J.G. Winant. So I can create a list on the fly as I'm going along. I can also create a list from the list manager by using new list. And it will give me basically the same options that I had before. So I can create a list here for, say, the history of Dover. And I'm going to save the list. And it doesn't have anything on it, but that's OK. I can have it as a placeholder until I find something in my searching that I want to put there. If I go back to my lists, I now have four lists. Let's say I'm all finished with my research into Jane Kenyon, and I don't need that list anymore. I can delete it, say OK, and it will go away. And now I have three lists, the History of Dover, which has nothing in it, the J.G. Wynant list, which has one item, and Manchester History, which has 10 items. So this allows you to save information that you have found in the New Hampshire State Library online catalog for your own reference and referral in the future. Questions about using the online system should be referred to the reference desk at 271-2144 or nhslref at dncr.nh.gov. Thank you for watching.